Now what I want to do is to click on one of these lines and change the properties for that line. If I select the line, you can see that on the left side I have the line properties. Now what can I do with these properties? Some of the properties are very important, such as the angle of that line. Right now you can see that the angle is 190. What I'm going to do is to make sure that this is 135. So I type this and press enter. Now you can see that the line has changed its angle and this is about 135 degrees. Now what about the length? On the top of this dialog box we have another text box that asks us about the length. What I want to do is to make sure that this is about 4 inches. So I type 4 and hit enter. Now you can see that the length increases to reflect the change that we had. And if I am satisfied with my changes, I just click on this OK and that's going to be that. Now you can see that I changed the properties for this. And again, I can have some constraints for this line. If I select the line, I can have property manager here. It says select an entity to view. Right now this looks to be selected, but actually it is not. So what I'm going to do is to reselect it. And on the left side, again, I can change the properties for this line. I have additional parameters, such as the starting point in X and Y, the end point in X and Y, and of course we have delta X and delta Y, that is the length of the line in different direction. If I, for example, want to start this from 20, 0, I can do that. And you can see that it changes to reflect this. If I want it to end in, for example, 18, 2, I can do that. Now you can see that it is finishing in 18, 2. And I can see that the delta X and delta Y has changed to 2 and 2 because I have moved 2 units in each direction. So if I, for example, go 3 units in this direction instead of 2, now you can see that the delta Y is going to be del uh, 3 units. And of course for me, these units are inches because I am working with IPS and I can make sure I'm working with IPS if I go to this bottom line and see that IPS is selected. And that's it. So you can change the property for a line. If you select multiple lines, again you can have some properties for them. But you can see that the selected entities have changed from one line to two lines. And if I go down, I can change some um, some shared properties and not all properties because for example one of the lines have a constraint of being a uh, vertical or uh, horizontal the other one does not have any constraint and one of the lines has different length than this one so I cannot have the same properties for those two lines so what I need to do is to change only the shared properties if I choose multiple lines and we do not normally do that. What we do is to change them using smart dimensions and I'm going to do that in later sections for you. Now let's talk about circle command. If I go to sketch tab I can see that we have two types of circle. One of them is the normal circle that you need to click the center and a point on the perimeter that makes us to draw this by radius. The other one asks you to have three points on the perimeter. This helps you to draw a table tangent to three different points. So let's go with the first one. I click on circle. It asks me to choose one of the planes. I want to choose top plane. I choose that. And if I want to be normal to this plane, I just press Control 8. This takes me to the top of this top plane. And I can say this is the top of the plane because I can look at this point here and this tells me that I am on the top of that top plane. So if I press Ctrl 8 once again, you can see that I go to the bottom of that. But I want to press Ctrl 8 once again and go to the top of top plane. So what I'm going to do is to draw the circle, a circle that has its origin on the origin of my coordination system. So I click here, and then what I need to have is another click that tells me how much the radius is going to be. So I just go to 3 and just click here. You can see that this is not an exact circle. 
I can just click on OK, the circle is drawn. If I want to change the circle, I need to click on that to select it. Once again, you can see the property is going to open. And from here, I can choose a different place for the center of the circle. Right now, it is on the origin, so you see 0 for X and 0 for Y. And of course, I can change the amount for, for the radius. So what I'm going to do is to have 3 inches for the radius and hit Enter. This is a circle with 3 inches. So I click on this and this closes the dialog box. Another circle, I want to draw it. So I just go and click on circle command once again and select a point somewhere such as the quadrants of the circle or any other place. I just click here and what I'm going to do is to make sure that my circle is tangent to the first circle. So I go over the first circle and like we can see that these two are going to be tangent. I can tell that by seeing that yellow sign on the right side of my mouse crosshair. Uh, on the right side of my crosshair that tells me if I click here I will have two tangent circles. That's okay. Tangency means that if I move the center of my circle the circle is not going to move. So let's click on this OK button. If I go to the center of the circle and try to move it you can see that the circle is going to be smaller. If I move it out the circle is going to be bigger but the tangency is not going to break. And right now you can see that the tangency goes to the origin. What I need to do is to make sure the tangency doesn't go away. And that's it. You can see that I have it. Now what I'm going to do is to change the radius. So if I select this circle, I can have the radius like this. I'm going to have a radius of 1.5. And I do this. I'm going to have the y on zero and right now you can see that the center of this is aligned with the center of this circle both of them are on the uh, right position the second type of circle is called perimeter circle what I need to do is to have three different clicks so let's do that this is the first click this is the second click and the third click is going to be here that's it now if I want to have another one let's press control button and the middle mouse button to pan this up. Now I want to click here, click here and click here. I have another circle with three different points. So what I'm going to do is to have a circle that is tangent to these three circles. How can I draw that? Again the perimeter circle is very nice. Select the perimeter of the first circle you can see that it goes to the other side of the circle. That's not okay. So what I'm going to do is to make sure that this goes out of the circle. So let's click on the edge of this one. So this is the second one. Now uh, you can see that it came out of that circle. And now what I need to do is to click on the edge of this circle. Now I have a circle that is tangent to three different circles. Two of the tangencies are created, but the first one's tangency is not created. What I need to do is to add it using the tangencies. So I just press OK. Uh, I select these two circles. And now you can see the tangent on the left side. And I make sure the tangency is added here. I'm going to talk about relationships later, but this is just one way to add a relation to two different circles. And in this case, I add a tangency to these circles. So now you know how to draw different circles. If I click on one of these circles, once again, you can see that that circle can be a construction circle. So if I click on that, you can see it. So this means that this is going to be used as a reference. It is not going to be used for, uh, for different features. Or I can remove this. And of course, I can change different parameters here. 